Hello and welcome to another episode of the Entrepreneur Enlightenment TV, where we bring amazing guests that either inspire, enlighten you, or give you that hope that when you fulfill your purpose, when you seek, the light is there and you will find it. Today I have a very special guest. She has hit a wall and she has kept the faith and she has found the magic of her life. Jennifer, please introduce yourself. Hi, thank you so much, Arena, for having me. I feel completely honored and blessed to be able to be here and share my story. I am Jennifer Pressmoon. I'm a clinical aromatherapist and educator. I help and teach others how to integrate aromatherapy and holistic health solutions into their life, into their health, into their business. So they can make a greater impact. They can feel better with what they do and continue helping others as well. Mm. So the show name is Scented Success Healing to Holistic Entrepreneur. So you're going to tell us a bit of the story and how you came upon. So if you Maybe even start with that moment in time where you hit the wall. Yes, I uh, used to be uh, in corporate America. I was an insurance underwriter uh, and a banker before that. And, um, you know, very intense career and uh, ended up with a urinary tract infection, got really, really sick and um, ended up taking some medications that gave me what is called antibiotic poisoning. And that further developed into Crohn's and colitis and IBS. And I just got very, very sick. I was not able to function on any capacity. And uh, after going a medical route, uh, we did you know several things. The doctors came back and said, there's nothing else we can do for you. You were in organ failure. You have about six months left at this rate. Um, so you might wanna consider hospice. You might wanna consider other alternatives. And that pulled me you know, wow. into, of course you're devastated. <laughs> wow, like I, I feel like goosebumps. Like I feel on my legs like goosebumps. And to be told that you have six months to live and you should consider hospice, like, how was that emotional process? I know it's hard, but just like, give me some my understanding of what one goes through when you hear that. I, I mean, I think it's like anytime you get bad news, everything goes silent. Everything goes on pause. I, I couldn't smell. I couldn't see. I couldn't think. And, and the worst Thing about that whole experience was the look in my mother's eyes oh. to see that devastation that that will always stay with me. And I think I use that as a driving force in what I do today, uh, because I never want somebody else. If I can help somebody from going through that type of pain, I feel that's why my life was saved. And so every, everything just goes kind of numb. And then you have to go into, it's a part of a grieving process. You mm -hmm. have to work through those emotions um, mm -hmm. to come to a place that, okay, now what, what am I going to do about it? Mm -hmm. So you, was your mother with you when you got the news or you had to tell her, oh, she was there? Yeah, she was with me every step of the way. I couldn't take care of myself. And so she would carry me to the doctor's appointments. Um, you know, when I got really sick and I had was having the most horrible reaction, mother's intuition, um, I didn't answer my phone. And so she's an hour away. She drove to my house. She had a bad feeling and she drove to my house and just banged on the door for hours until I could crawl and open the door and let her in. And then she rushed me to the ER and we started that process. So yeah, she was with me every step of the way. Wow. Uh, so you're talking about the grieving process and when you hear this news and the first step of the grieving process is that acceptance. What, what was the grieving process for you from the moment you got the news to the moment you started to do something about it? Uh, the first thing was, I can't believe this is happening to me. 
you hear it about other people and you feel bad that other people go through that and our heart aches for them, but you, you just don't know. And, and so for me, I couldn't believe it. Um, and then it was into anger. Why is this happening to me? <clears throat> and then fear of, you know, I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to live a life, you know, that I, I know I, I can do great things in this life and I'm not going to be given that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and you that were, was, you were 20. I was 23. Oh, wow. So young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so I wasn't going to have a life and then what happened next? And then now what? I, you know, part of the fiber of who I am, of who I always have been is you figure things out. I solve problems. I'm great at, I loved putting puzzles together, you know, growing up, that was my thing. You know, I loved piecing things together and and playing detective and figuring things out. And this was my ultimate challenge to figure me out. And I took myself on as a project Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I had a lot of people coming in, do this, do that was overwhelming. And I had to get to a point where I had to shut out the noise and not listen to anybody and just tell everybody, listen, I love you. I'm going to fight with everything I got, but I need to do this. And so if I don't reply to you or ask you or take your advice, please don't get upset. Um, I'm going to figure it out. And Mm -hmm. That's what started the process of of entering into an herb shop and learning Uh different things, pulling out my anatomy and physiology books and figuring out why was I broken? What happened? Uh And do you feel like you were guided? Like, do you feel when you were like before you before you started to heal when you were in that difficult period of time? Because that's the worst. And that's usually when we're in fear. We can't hear divine guidance or whatever we call it. So do you feel like even to do that at 20 something to shut the people off, like that's quite wise. Do you feel like you had guidance or you had a knowing that the answer is inside of you? I I don't think I knew it at the time, you know, being, you know, 20 something years later, I can look back and say, yes, I feel that I was guided. I feel that I was lifted up. I don't feel that I did it. I feel that, you know, God picked me up and put me in his hands and carried me through that. I, I can, I don't feel that I can take credit for that. There was some divine intervention that lifted me up. And, and I think maybe by blinding me from distractions and blinding me from, you know, not knowing what was, what was to come. I, it was embracing the unknown and just keep taking a step, keep taking a step, keep mm-hmm. moving forward, mm-hmm. try something else. Uh, there was some propelling force and, you know, thankfully that did keep guiding me. And because I, I feel that I was a little disconnected in that way, it kept me from getting in the way. It kept me from resisting that journey. Yes. And that's so important because the answer is within us and our answer is unique to us. And when we can like sometimes shut off the world and just listen and let ourselves be guided because I feel like we're all guided. Some of us hear it and follow the guidance and some of us don't. And my mission is to share those stories for people to understand that they can be guided and to allow themselves to be guided. So now let's go into the how it all sold out and how you then became to do this for other people. So what was the first breakthrough like from the that moment of desperation, then the grieving process, and then what started to happen to move you to health and then to purpose? I had went into my sister had found a local herb shop in my town because we live about an hour apart. And she says, why don't you go in there and see what they can do? I was in a wasting condition. I was 74 pounds unless I took certain prescriptions that would, you know, plump me up. 
Uh, but I was just in such a weakened state and she's like, maybe go to the herb shop. And I, and I walked in there and the lady, you know, started talking to me and sharing her wisdom about some herbs and, you know, probiotics and uh, some different things that might be able to help. And she's like, all right, well, what if we tried to help you? What if you got better? And I said, oh, I didn't think about that. I was preparing for a funeral. I wasn't preparing for life. Oh, wow. And, and, and she just, she said it. So matter of fact, well, you can live. And I thought, oh my gosh, I didn't, I didn't think about it that way. And I mean, it's embarrassing, but it was enlightening to just some, the little uh, hope, the little glimpse of hope that shifted my perspective into living instead of dying, I think was another propelling moment. And she happened to be learning about essential oils. She goes, I just learned about essential oils. I just learned about this one oil that I heard would calm IBS cramps and, you know, just feeling really down and depressed and, and not well. Uh, would you like to smell it? Would you try it? And I smelled it and I loved it. And she made it up in a roll on for me. And she said, okay, now, whenever you wake up in the morning with those IBS cramps, I want you to try this. And I did. And it worked wow. every single time, almost to the point I couldn't wait to get cramps again or the, an IBS attack. So I, I wanted to see if it would work. Again. If it was, so you wanted to try the magic. But this is, this is such an important point, what you said, that you were preparing for the end and you probably went into the shop to make your life easier until the end comes. And then this practitioner, and I think this is part of our job when we work with people to give them that hope that life can be better. And I think it's our choice that life can be better, that we can turn it around, no matter what the conditions are, like you were in, in a poor health and six months to live and like so skin and bone, I assume. And that possibility, and I want people to believe in magic because we are the magic, we create the magic and whatever we are focusing on happening, it's happened. So she shifted you from, okay, let me make myself comfortable for the little bit of life I have left to let me go towards healing. And that's like, like, that's the epiphany. So then you started to heal. What other important steps in your healing journey? Uh, you know, not only did she turn me from facing the darkness and point me into the light, um, you know, she said, hey, I, I want to help you, uh, you know, come in every day. I was I was in such poor quality that I had to take a sabbatical from my job. I did love my job. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very stressful and intense, but I loved it. Um, but I had to take a sabbatical and she's like, okay, so instead of you sitting at home all day by yourself, why don't you, or have, you know, have your husband bring you in and, um, you know, I'll take care of you. I'll feed you tea all day. And I did. And I stayed oh. in her shop every day. Beautiful soul sending her like so much love and light. Oh, it, it would, the kindness that she showed, not only did she give me hope, but she showed me what kindness looks like and what kindness feels like. If you, if you say one thing and, and not only did she say, I'm interested in you, I want to help you. She meant it. And I would show up and she would have customers come in and I would sit there. And over the course of a few months, her customers would see me getting better. And then they started asking, okay, you're looking good. You're doing better. Um, you're not skin and bones anymore. What, what are you doing? And I would share with them, I'm doing aromatherapy. I'm doing herbs. And they're like, well, what? I have a headache. What do you have for that? And I, oh, I learned about a couple oils that could help. Oh, will you make it up for me? And I did. And that kept happening. And before I knew it, I, my business was flourishing before I even named my business, before I even did anything with the business. People wanted what I was doing. And if I didn't know, I would figure it out. Wow. I would go and research. And just like I was helping myself, I was helping them. But by helping them, I was helping me too. 
Uh, just do this so I can see your sign in the back <laughs> of you. Yes. So that's like you've been 20 some years doing uh, Jensen's aromatherapy as a business and you are now uh, doing more mentorship. So I wanted to ask, did you go back to school? Because I saw you had you have a psychology degree or like, did you go back to school or was that already there? Tell me about your schooling just a little bit. Yeah, I had, um, I went straight from high school into college and got my degree in psychology um, and continued just doing work on that aspect and then kind of fell into uh, the psychology of underwriting. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so that was my background, but I had a lot of science. Um, I was going to originally go for physical therapy and then switched over into psychology. So I understood the body. I mean, how serendipitous is that? I learned about the body for a reason and and I learned why. Yeah. So you see, so you went totally in the wrong path, like with the underwriting, it was not you because you had that inkling from younger if you went that path. So your soul, your heart knew the path, but then the, you know, the logical mind, the this happens to be in front of you and you do it. Like I went to engineering, you know, like I can't explain that, but you do what's in front of you, but then somehow the universe has like a way to redirect you. So I know that since you have helped many people heal and also many uh, you train or you certify aromatherapist, share a little bit about that then rather than me guessing from your uh, bio. Yeah. So, you know, from that journey, as I did start the aromatherapy blending bar where people would come in and let me know their, their problems and I would create a blend for them. And from there, I developed a product line. Um, so I have some signature products and then my custom blends. And then I became a holistic health practitioner. And through that journey, I have helped thousands. Uh, but that also got me to being asked to speak on stages and speak at conferences and local clubs and at different events to share my journey, but also share solutions. And that was so profound. And there wasn't at the time that much education out there. And the Internet isn't wasn't what it is now. And so I had created a school. So while I was building the product side, I was building the school side to teach people because I was fortunate to have a background. I was fortunate to have people fall in my life and be around me through family and friends to lift me up and support me. But not everybody has that. Yes. And if I could be that, if I, if my life was saved and I could be that beacon of hope and that beacon of education to say, yes, I'm here for you. I can help you. Let me share what I know. And let's, let me help you figure this out. That just was my passion. That's that's what I I then I realized my purpose uh, that I just need to share it in any capacity that I could. Mm -hmm. So I want to read from your bio because you are 2023 recipient of the National Association of Holistic Aromatherapy Lifetime Achievement Leadership Award. Like wow! And I also know that you started with fainting and not wanting to public speak. So tell us a little bit, because I know we have everything we need inside of us to fulfill our purpose, but I know also our purpose like stretches us to grow to the next level. So how did you go from fainting to speaking in front of thousands of people and getting this prestigious award? Oh, wow. Yes. I was always petrified. I was not the first person to raise my hand. Although I knew the answer, I was so debilitatingly shy. I was not an extrovert. I was an extreme introvert. Um, public speaking, I mean, I made straight A's through everything I did. I'm an overachiever pretty much in everything I do, but public speaking was not one of them. And as I was getting asked to share what I knew, of course, you have to get in front of people. And my mentor, the lady who coached me through my health journey at the herb shop, still my best friend today uh, and, and a good business mentor uh, as well. But she coached me on how to do that. So when I got up and practiced in front of my mom, I passed out. I said, hi, my name is Jennifer. Kadonk. <laughs> I mean, I pa passed out. Uh, I couldn't do it. But you're right. I think our purpose 
there's something that keeps propelling us in that self-development to keep going and try to be bigger than ourselves. And I took a lot of herbs, a lot of adaptogens and a lot of relaxing herbs. I smelled a lot of lavender <laughs> and a lot of chamomile uh, to be able to get in front of people. And in one of my first presentations, I literally had to sit behind the podium with the microphone with my head between my legs so I didn't pass out. But I did it and I got a standing ovation uh, because I did it. They got to be a part of me conquering a fear. And in that moment, I realized they still heard me. I still had something to share and practice. So over the years, I now speak in front of thousands of people. Um, but it was a journey, you know, you one step at a time, one little thing at a time, you just got to keep doing it, get up and keep doing it. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. I love your stories. And I know you are going to do a demo with me. And I picked an oil that you don't know. And I don't know exactly what you will do because it's it's a it's a live demo. But I wanted to say that I wanted to pick a, an oil intuitively, but actually it came in my dream two nights ago, knowing that we're preparing for the show. And it is an oil I love. So you, I'm turning it to you. You guide now what do we do with the oil and the demo and how do you do it? Okay, I'm ready. So you guide, what do I need to do? So grab an oil that you've chosen or that you have uh, resonated with. Um, and I want you to open the lid and I want you to smell it. Now make sure your nose doesn't touch the rim, but, but I want you to move it side to side and I want you to breathe in that scent. And on a scale of one to 10, 10 being, oh, I love this so much. And one being, mm, I don't like it. And five kind of in the middle and others in between. Where would you rank that on a scale of one to 10? I adore it. I think it's a 10 plus. Oh, wonderful. And what thoughts does it bring to mind for you? joy uplifting even the color i picked today i don't know ever what color i pick so i picked the yellow the uplifting cheerful joyful and is there any other memories or thoughts that are coming forward really connecting and going back to the first time you ever smelled this scent what was going on what was happening? What events were going on? I don't know uh, when I smelled the scent first, but I, when I, you asked me to tune in, I feel the possibility of miracles. That's kind of the feeling that came to me. There is a possibility of miracles, and I just uh, smell into it, like the uh, follow, follow the path of the possibility of miracles. And I think what you shared, your story is that. So that's what it comes to me. And when you're smelling that scent, where do you feel it in your body? Is it in your head? Is it in your throat? Is it in your chest? It's more on my left side. And I've been working recently to balance my right and the left, like the masculine and feminine. So my left side has had like a little bit of inflammation and I'm working on, on balancing that and opening up. So it's more on my left side as if I'm almost like smelling with half of my body smells it and the other doesn't, if that makes any sense. And is it just in your head or is it in your throat? Or your no, chest? I feel it all the way down to the leg. Like I feel all the way on the left side as if it's, connecting and so the significance of the left side this oil is telling you whatever you're working on the miracles that you need to happen with relationships to those left-sided issues are related to a female energy in your life and so this oil is saying there's some imbalance going on with a female in your life and this oil is going to help you work through the miracle whatever that is, what's coming to me intuitively is forgiveness 
forgiveness of female energy, um, left-sided being, bringing you back in balance. You lead with such balance and grace, but something is keeping you off balance and it's keeping you tilted. And so this oil is speaking to you. Part of what I teach people is how to understand how to interpret scent meaning. Scent is so powerful, more than a pretty smell, but it's telling you particularly what it can do for you. Mm -hmm. So tell me what the oil is. Is bergamot. Bergamot. Bergamot has a personality and you see it's got the yellow sign signifying citrus. Mm -hmm. uh, which is matching up to what you're wearing. And, mm -hmm. you know, yellow, look at the significance of yellow. Yellow is a light. It's showing you light. It's like a flashlight to help you when you feel lost. And Bergamo being a pick me up is helping to pick you up. You're feeling, I help people. I do all of these things for everybody. Why am I off balance? Why am I having trouble with female, why am I letting the situation with a female invade me and throw me off balance? And Bergamo is like, because there's still healing to do, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to help you do that. And by smelling it, you're right, it's shifting your, your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems to bring you into balance, mm -hmm. but also to bring into first bring into your awareness that this is what you need to heal not only is it what needs to be healed because you gave it a 10, it means you're ready. You're open and receptive to yes. allow that healing. Because if you gave it a one or a two and you still had that same feelings and we had the same story and you rated it a one or a two, it's telling you, Irina, you need to work on this, but we're going to wait because you're not ready yet. We're going to get there. We're going to find another oil that's going to get you there, but we're not ready yet. But because you gave it a 10 plus, your body's like, ah, I'm open and receptive to allow the healing, to bring in the miracle of healing, to work through. And now we talked a lot about shifting our perspective, shifting it from the dark to the light, which is going to have significance, you know, with, with both of us. And this is shifting you to face that light to say, yes, I'm going to now see the situation from a different perspective that fosters acceptance and healing and forgiveness, but that also recalibrates you to that new level so you don't revert. Back. Yes. And for me, it's receptivity rather than like giving. That's like the feminine, the believing that it's coming to me and I don't need to do something on a masculine. So... This is wonderful. So you are able to connect the oil with the, how do you say, emotional, mental, spiritual, and give people a, uh, like the way you gave me, gave people a, a, a path forward. So if you were to kind of summarize an advice for me, like what now, what do I do now? I smell the oil all day, like give me that and then we will go towards how you can support other people. Yeah. So what I like to do when we do that, normally in my sessions, we'll smell a few oils and then I combine them into a custom blend. Uh, in, in the teaching part, I teach others how to do this process, how to interpret that, what I call scent interpretation. And we create a custom blend because we've done that with the bergamo today, I would read, recommend getting a diffuser or getting a bowl of even Epsom salt and just putting a couple drops right on there and just let that sit with you and let that resonate with you today and see how you feel. And when emotions and feelings come up, journal about that mm -hmm. verbal journal, meditate on it, pray about it, write it down uh, to really connect on a deeper level, because then you're showing it. I, I appreciate you showing up for me today. Uh, so it's going to guide you on that journey and you'll smell that every day. And then one day you're going to say, it's only like a seven today. Ah, that means you've shifted and now we're ready to go to the next oil. Oh, so just, yeah. So it makes me joyful. It makes me like, I want to go. Like, I want to, I want to do something. I like, I feel I'm already shifted. If that can make sense. Like, I feel like, yay, we're doing it. We're ready. We're going. So you told me you're doing mentorship. And you also told me you have like a gift to give to the audience. 
take me into that? Yes. So I have a free short mini class. So for those that are new to aromatherapy or essential oils or want to expand what they know and learn a little bit about what we just talked about and what you just experienced, I do have a free mini class, Essential Oils for Mental Clarity and Emotional Balance, where I'm going to talk a little bit more about what aromatherapy is, what essential oils are, how do they work, why do they work, and then we'll talk some specific oils. Uh, so you actually have tools and I'm going to tell you how to use them. So ne- not only have the knowledge, but the skill and what are your next steps to do with that? And so I do have that uh, free mini class for everyone um, that's watching and, us. Yeah. And I'll put the link in with, with the, with the episode. What a journey what a journey. I appreciate so much you sharing the story of how giving the six months to leave and then that shift between preparing to die or, or deciding to leave and make something of your life and how you were guided and the purpose came through so strongly, which you already knew because you took that path first before going into a career that maybe was not yours. I appreciate so much you sharing the story and and fainting and then uh, speaking with your head between your legs in front of people and then coming on stages and speaking to thousands of people. It's such an amazing journey of courage because everyone who wants to seek enlightenment, everyone who wants to fulfill a purpose, it's not always rainbows and unicorns. It requires growing into it. It requires that moving into something that it makes you uncomfortable. But knowing that you have the guidance, the angels, whatever you call it around you, that knowingness, and so you have the support, but then you have to put some of your humanness into it to progress and to let go of fears or judgments or whatever comes in the way. This is a great story, and I'm so happy we were able to share it. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you.